the United States. Yes. We just we just finished singing. I have a statement to make here. This country has been held captive by the threat of ever-increasing deficits, and it became apparent several weeks ago when our nation was stunned as the stock market took a dramatic dive. There were many reasons given for the drop, but few wanted to take responsibility. It became clear, though, on that day that it was time for action. And immediately we took the necessary steps to deal with our federal budget problems. For the past 20 days, my representatives have been meeting with negotiators from the Congress, hammering out a credible and reliable deficit reduction plan, a plan that's both fair and responsible, a plan that meets our short-term concerns while laying the foundation for long-term solutions. And today I'm pleased to announce that a bipartisan agreement has been reached on the budget, not just for one year, but for two a blueprint that sends a strong signal both at home and abroad that together we can and will get our deficit under control and keep it that way. This agreement is probably not the best deal that could be made, but it is a good, solid beginning. It provides the necessary services for our people, maintains our national security, and does so at a level that does not overburden the average American taxpayer. In a word, fairness and while there will be other reports to reduce the deficit, today we're sending the right message at the right time. So let me extend my personal thanks to the congressional leadership and to the budget negotiators for the spirit of cooperation they have shown. All of us, Republican and Democrat, Senator and Congressman, must roll up our sleeves and go to work so that we can complete this important job. And the challenge before us is to make our case to the American people and to urge them to join with us in reaching our goal, a sound and enforceable budget. Our commitment is to continue on a path of growth and opportunity. And we have today committed ourselves to a fiscal path that will lead to continued economic growth and opportunity and provide a solid base for economic stability in the future. You know, first, I think maybe, Jim, would you like to? Thank you, Mr. President. This is truly a bipartisan agreement. It is a balanced package. Everybody gives some. Nobody gets everything he wants. Not the President, not the Congress, not Democrats nor Republicans. It is a, a real set of deficit reductions. It isn't painless for the very reason that it is real and not cosmetic. I believe it is a demonstration that in time of stress, the administrative and executive, as well as the, the, and the legislative branches of the government can work together, uh, even when they're in the hands of different political parties. And so uh, we anticipate its adoption uh, on the, uh, in the House and, uh, and in the Senate. Uh, I understand it has the support of all the leadership, Democrat and Republican, uh, in the House and Senate. Do you think you can make it stick? Senator Byrd, a few words here. This is a demonstration that the executive branch and the legislative branch can work together, that they have demonstrated the discipline and the will and the determination to reach an agreement that is a positive one, that is a substantive one, we think that this is a good message to send to the markets and to the people. And we um, are pledged to give our support to it and the full implementation of it. And I want to personally thank the President and his representatives and Tom Foley and the members on both sides of the aisle and both houses who have worked so long in uh, preparing this package, which I think is a very good birthday present for me. <laughs> and. Uh, this is my 31st, the 31st anniversary of, of, my, th of my 39th birthday. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Mr. You know, a gentleman here first that should be heard from, and we're all indebted to him, and that was the chairman of the negotiations, Tom Foley. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I think we see this agreement as a milestone in our efforts to bring about a reduction of the deficit. It represents a consensus between both parties, the Congress and the President, and this is a good, solid plan. It does not have budgetary gimmicks or smoke and mirrors, as uh, sometimes the uh, words are used. It is an achievable reduction to the targets of Graham Mudman this year and substantially more next year. Andrea, did you have a question? Yes. <laughs> How are we going to make this stick? How are we going to sell it to the Republicans who don't like it? And what do you say to those who say it isn't enough? Well, I think we've indicated up here that this is something that must be ongoing, but that it is a good beginning. And uh, as to selling it to our, all of us that you see up here are going to go to work on that right now. To the wrong party doesn't like it. The wrong party says it's too much taxes and too much of a defense. Well, uh, let's wait and see what they uh, say when it comes around to uh, after we've had a chance to visit. Well, Mr. President, Mr. President uh, many on Wall Street, sir, have already discounted this because of the relative small numbers, about 30 and 45 billion in the two years, and because it presumably doesn't contain any COLA reductions. So the street uh, seems to think it's not going to be enough, won't make any difference. I have an answer to the street about that. Should I give it? <laughs> well, it isn't original with me. I wouldn't plagiarize. <laughs> but a man sent me a letter the other day, and he just pointed out that with Wall Street looking for so many outside areas as being responsible for the volatility of the marketplace, he said even a farmhand cleaning out the stalls in a barn knows that what he's cleaning out didn't come from outside. It was produced in the barn. Are you attacking Wall Street? Uh, you no, I'm just saying that they've got some things to straighten out themselves also. Mr. President, sir, what, what, is your, what is your reaction to the Iran-Contra report, which charges that there was a disdain for the law in this White House and says you were responsible for this atmosphere? Sam, this day is given over to budget deficit. I'm not going to take any questions. So, Mr. President, how do, you plan, how do you plan to go out and vigorously sell $9 billion in new taxes when you just the other day at the Chamber of Commerce said taxes were not the way to go on. I would, I would like to remind you that in the budget last January that I sent up to the Congress, I had proposals in there for $9 billion in revenues. And uh, this has been a part of our proposal all the way, but they are not taxes dealing with the changes in the income tax or taxes that we think would be deleterious to the, uh, uh, to the economy. But the, these sources of revenue are, they've been there laying on the shelf since January. You know, are you ever going to respond? Uh, people on Wall Street wonder why this deal was put together many days ago, the, the, the basic numbers were in place many days ago, and they're saying, why has it taken so long to produce so little? Because I think when you get dealing here in government with two branches or th of government and uh, two parties involved and all, uh, there are people who have their own ideas and who like to make su make suggestions and uh, some are accepted and some are denied and we finally come to an agreement. Well, I'm holding here. it up, Mr. President. I mean, the, the numbers were set several days ago. Well, finally we came to an agreement. Do you think the market will react? We better bring this up. Can we ask Mr. Wright? Can we ask the Speaker a question? Mr. President, how do we have to go here? Mr. Speaker, did you want to take a question? Mr. Speaker, is it? Have you identified for the President all of the areas where the taxes will come from, or is that still up in the air? Well, I don't think it's up in the air exactly. The exact list of what, where these taxes will come from? No, and he didn't ask for one. Uh, we have um, a bill that we passed in the House. The Senate has a bill which has been reported from committee. The uh, President uh, and uh, members of the Senate may have suggestions to make with respect to additional uh, changes, modifications, amendments. Uh, whatever emerges from the Senate 
Uh, I presume would go to conference with what has passed in the House. and quite sure that they, would... they will not be rate increases in any sense. I don't think it is uh, achievable uh, in this uh, climate to have rate increases, and um, uh, I think it would be unrealistic for me to expect to pass any rate increases. I, uh, I, as you know, I said early on this year that my personal preference uh, might be to extend the, uh, uh, the, the rate uh, as it is, not have rate reductions for those at the top of the economic spectrum. That isn't going to happen this year. It isn't in the House bill. It isn't in the Senate bill. And the president. Pledge. You are and, giving that pledge, sir. Well, I don't have to give the pledge. The president's already indicated he'd veto a bill that had it in there. Okay, so. Mr. President, are you satisfied that they've been specific enough about the taxes and that yes. you're not going to? Uh, yes. It, well, what, what the speaker says is correct, but also in addition, maybe he was going to get to this. There has been an agreement on the kind of taxes it wouldn't be. Let's take a 10 minute filing break and then we'll come back for the other agreement. Do you now agree, sir? Wait, 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 wait. My boss is kicking us out of here. Do you now agree, sir, that there won't be a joint session with Mr. Gorbachev? That Mr. Gorbachev will not appear before a joint session of Congress? They have never formally asked for one. But would you have liked one if the Republicans had not rebelled against it? No, and this, this never originated with, with us at all. There was talk of it. Speaker Wright announced it, sir. But there was talk of it, yes, but no request. Is it going to be a summit? Did you sign this request, Mr. Gorbachev? Jim Baker going to remain. Marlon, did he sign this request, Mr. Gorbachev? Marlon, was the request made? Marlon, was the request made? Marlon, was the request made? Okay, you want to take a 10 minute file? Tell us about the request. Let's go on. All right, we'll be handing out paperwork.